The following is part of a course I did for Udemy where I describe each muscle in detail. I decided to put this video up for free on YouTube as fellow artists might be interested in it and get some benefit from it. If you want to see a specific muscle, look in the video description and you can jump ahead to it. Here's the subscapularis, and I can't take the scapula off the plastic model, so we just have to imagine that it is going up underneath the scapula. Here's the supraspinatus, and if you'll remember, supra means above, and spinatus refers to the spine of the scapula. So that's exactly where this muscle is going, um, right above uh, the spine of the scapula. And uh, the model doesn't have a hole um, underneath the acromion process, so I'm just putting clay on uh, both sides to indicate uh, that, it is, uh, that it goes through there. So here's the infraspinatus, which uh, is the muscle underneath the spine, um, as its uh, name indicates. Below the infraspinatus is the teres minor, and um, if you'll remember, it goes uh, to the back of the humerus and uh, just uh, fits right there underneath the infraspinatus. Below the teres minor is the teres major, and it uh, folds underneath the arm and attaches to the front of the humerus. For the rhomboid muscles, I'm just putting in one large block and then I'll, I will separate them with a, with a tool to indicate the major and the minor. So the major obviously is the larger one and it's on the bottom and the minor is on top. So here's the levator scapulae, and uh, I didn't make the neck on the plastic uh, tall enough to uh, indicate or to give it uh, its connection point, uh, so I just kind of trailed it off into nothing there. <laughs> here's the serratus anterior, and if you'll remember it goes up underneath the scapula. We can't do that with this plastic model, so I'm just folding it up and, um, you know, uh, showing where it, it comes out from underneath the scapula. So here's the latissimus dorsi, and um, uh, you can see where it attaches on the back. And don't forget that it come, folds up underneath the teres major and attaches to the humerus in front of the teres major.
Here's the trapezius, which uh, attaches to the, the spine of the scapula and goes around and attaches to the um, clavicle as well and attaches to the spine and back and goes up and attaches to the skull at, top, at the top. You should remember that the uh, long head of the triceps brachii goes up and goes in between the teres major and the minor. So to, uh, to do that with the clay, I have to pull back the teres minor and um, uh, connect what, uh, what would be the long head to the scapula. And then I'll put the teres minor back down. So here's the coracobrachialis, which attaches to the coracoid and goes down and attaches to the, the humerus. So here's the pectoralis minor, which attaches to the ribs and um, uh, goes up and attaches to the coracoid process. And I'll cut the little serrations in it as well. So here's the brachialis, which attaches to the humerus and goes down and attaches to the ulna. Here is the biceps brachii, and uh, you can see I have two heads. Uh, one head goes up and attaches to the coracoid process. The other one goes back underneath the muscles and attaches to the supraglenoid tubercle, uh, which um, I didn't. I didn't go. I didn't go through the trouble of pulling those muscles up and uh, putting that back in there, but you could if you wanted. So here's the pectoralis major, which attaches to the rib, sternum, and clavicle, and then uh, goes out and attaches to the humerus. Here's the deltoid, which uh, covers up uh, a lot of the detail in the shoulder. A lot of the complexity is underneath the deltoid, and uh, it attaches to the clavicle and uh, the spine of the scapula. Here I'm attaching the supinator. Here's the pronator, quadratus, which uh, pronates the arm, and quadratus means that it's in the shape of a square. Uh, which is opposite from the pronator teres. Teres means round, and so um, the pronator teres is at the top, and it uh, it has two heads. One goes to the ulna, and one goes to the medial epicondyle of the humerus. So I have those two heads uh, indicated there, and um, they both join on the radius.
So with the muscles that uh, attach at the tips of the fingers, I didn't take the tendons all the way to the tips of the fingers. I uh, just went to the base of the hand um, because it became too cluttered and unclear when I tried to have all the tendons uh, attached to the plastic model. So here's the flexor pollicis longus, and it would attach uh, to the tip of the thumb, but like I said, I'm just taking it to the wrist. Next to it is the flexor digitorum profundus. And over those two muscles is the flexor digitorum superficialis, which uh, attaches um, both to the radius and the ulna and the medial epicondyle of the humerus. I used one piece of clay for all three of the wrist flexors and then I separated, just drew a line in to, to indicate the separations between the three. So, uh, so this one piece of clay um, is a stand-in for the flexor carpi radialis, the flexor carpi ulnaris, and the palmaris longus. Here is the brachia radialis, which attaches to uh, the ridge of the humerus and goes down and attaches to the radius. So I'm using one piece of clay for the extensor carpi radialis muscles and then I will draw a line down the center of it to indicate that there are two muscles that there is the extensor carpi radialis longus and the extensor carpi radialis brevis. I'm adding each of the, the thumb muscles. First I'm adding the abductor pollicis longus which attaches to the first bone and abducts the thumb or moves it away from the hand. Next I'm attaching the extensor pollicis brevis and uh, lastly I will attach the extensor pollicis longus. So here I'm adding the extensor indices, and first I'm adding the whole thing in where it attaches at the distally on the finger, and then I will take it off, uh, take off half the tendon for clarity. So here's the extensor digitorum and uh, it would go out to the fingers but like I said I'm not including the part that's beyond the wrist. And here is the extensor digiti minimi which lies right next to the extensor digitorum. And here is the extensor carpi ulnaris.
And lastly, we have the Anconius.